Kia ora everyone, my name's Zach, I love rugby. Welcome back to Haka Time Rugby. Guys, this video is long overdue. You've all been very, very patient, but right now we are gonna drop our British and Irish Lions selection for 2020. And you know if you follow this channel that this is the continuation of a series that we are doing in the lead up to the South African tour in 2021. We've already dropped four parts of the series. Please go back and check them. I'll link them to this video right now. Um, and in particular, check out that video um, where we describe the strategy we're going to employ in order to beat the Springboks. That hasn't changed for us, um, but what has changed is that we were able to see some form this year in the Six Nations in 2020. We've seen a number of games, and I've identified a number of players that really fit the mold and the strategy that we are trying to employ. So this gives us a great opportunity to revise those selections. There are definitely some changes to the 2019 team that I selected. And I think you're going to be surprised by some selections as well. But do check that video out because that outlines the strategy that I'm looking to select. But it also outlines um, the rotation policy that I have for each of the major categories of selections, i.e. Um, we're generally going with a high rotation policy for the front row. Um, but let me just get straight to the selections right now, guys. So here is the Hakka Time Rugby um, selection for the British and Irish Lions team in 2020. I'm gonna quickly go through the names, guys, on the front row there for starters. And please don't get hung up too much with, between starters and finishes. Um, as Eddie Jones said, it's a 23 man game. And this team is designed very much to meet a strategy um, that we are trying to employ here. So high rotation in the front row. I'm gonna be quite demanding of the second row here and expect that Atoji and Ryan hold up their end. They're two young guys, two highly athletic guys. So I'm gonna be pushing them to play 80 minutes. Now we do have coverage here on Courtney Laws. Um, obviously he can play in the loose um, forwards as well as at second row. So he is predominant. His primary role will be the back row for me. And in particular at number six, his secondary role will be second row cover. And that means that very clearly we are targeting the breakdown as our primary focus to defeat the Springboks. We're going with the 6-2 split but we are stacking the back row. And in particular, we are stacking the back row with ball winners and we are stacking the back row with mobility and we are stacking the back row with physicality. That is the brief for me. And that is why I have selected six loose forwards. Um, obviously Courtney Laws can play cover there for the second row, but that is where we are gonna win this series. I mean, if you look across the board, um in the four teams in the british and irish Lions, there is just a huge amount of skill sets and talent at the loose forward um in so that is what we're going to call on and that is where we're going to target um what that means is that obviously light coverage in the backs we've gone with um uh, to start we've gone with gareth davies i do think halfback overall is going to be a troublesome um uh, position for the british and irish Lions, and particularly there's not a not a huge amount of depth of top line talent there. So I've gone with Gareth Davies, but you could very easily go with a Thomas Williams, um, even Ben Young. Some people may like him as a selection, but these guys are all just above average in my view and are just not at that next level up that we really need to run this team. So I'd identify halfback as a position of concern overall for the um, for the Lions, but Gareth Davies has proven, in, even in that semi-final against, um, uh, against the Springboks, that he can hold his own against Faf, and in particular, that he can run a team around the park um, against the Springboks, so he makes it in. Owen Farrell is in here at, um, at first five. I like his attitude. I like his mental toughness. I like his leadership capabilities, um, so I've selected him in at 10. I think he's just one player who will deal with that uh, cauldron of pressure really, really well in South Africa. So that's why I've selected him. Manu Tui Lange obviously has to make the centers. I've moved him to 12 and put Jonathan Davies there outside him at 13. Um, namely, because I like the option of using Manu Tui Lange at the crash ball at 12 to try and draw the defense in. We know that the rush defense is very, very good for the Springboks, and in particular, the rush defense on 10 and the rush defense down that 13 channel. So Manu Tui Lange will just help to give an additional option there to draw the defense in on 12 so that we get some space out on the wings. Jonathan Davies, for me, is one of the best distributors in the game. Um, so his ability, to, distributors and decision makers in the game, his ability to get the ball out to the wings, his ability to choose the right option in attack and defense, for me, is world class. 
that's why I've got him outside to Ilungi at 13. Um, I've sprung a little surprise here um, in the back three. I've gone with Johnny May. Obviously, he's, um, he's, he's had incredible form this year and just extended his existing form over the last couple of years. But this year in particular, he showed me a little bit more. Um, previously, I saw Johnny May as a finisher. Now I see him as a creator. He showed that he can create a number of really, really good tries. Um, he was pretty good against, um, against France this year in, in a losing effort. Um, but overall, he just showed that he's adding another string to his bow. And I really think he's probably at the peak of his powers right now um, based on form this year. Stuart Hogg makes it in. I just think you need a you know, highly capable um, guy. Uh, obviously, leadership qualities, which we're going to need in a difficult place to play in South Africa. Um, but also, he's got a long-range boot, and that's going to be very, very important for us whether it be a last-minute drop goal, whether it be a long-range um, penalty. These are considerations that we really need to start thinking about. So I want Stuart Hogg there. Very, very close to putting Liam Williams there um, out at fullback. I do think he's probably the best of the fullbacks. Um, but we are also expecting a lot of high balls. Um, so we need guys that are good under the high ball, and that's why I've gone Liam Williams there as a surprise selection on the wing. Um, you know, Kiwis, we love to put fullbacks on the wing there. So that's why I've selected him there. I just think under the high ball, and we will expect a lot of ball to come towards the wing areas. Uh, a guy like Liam Williams will help to diffuse some of the aerial attack that we can expect. Now, in terms of the front row, I've covered off most other areas, but Joe Marler makes it in for me. Um, I thought that the English scrum in the World Cup final finished a lot better than it started. Um, that's why I've bought in Marler. Ken Owens, I'll say that Depth that hooker is starting to look like a bit of a concern for the British and Irish lines for me as well. So that's one area I think, um, you know, Ken Owens makes it this time, but there's a couple of guys that are right on the cusp there. And he's certainly by no means a standout, I would say, at hooker. Um, you know, the, just the depth in that position right now doesn't look to be too deep. So I, th this position could change. The, the replacement hooker could change in the next year, um, 12 months before that tour. So certainly Ken Owens makes it now, but that position is wide open. Carl Sinclair, I've given him the opportunity that unfortunately was taken from him um, in the World Cup final. Not only that, but he's a great guy with ball in hand. So, you know, in the finisher role, I think you'll see a lot more out of him um, against potentially tiring defence. Um, a guy who can certainly hold his own in the in the in the scrum, um, but a guy that can make the play, whether it be the final pass, the short ball, or even run that 20, 25 meters to finish off tries. He's the kind of guy you want in that finishing role. And I just remind people that the the starters to finish a role is not a case anymore of um, the best start and um, and the bench, uh, the second term players or the second string players. That's not how I look at it. We are devising a very specific strategy. So we need guys that can fill the entire 23-man roster and every role that is required within the 23-man squad. So Kyle Sinclair coming off the bench is a very deliberate ploy to bring an injection of pace while not losing anything in the um, in the set piece, an injection of pace and an additional attacking option there in the front row. And that's a huge luxury to have. You know, when you're um, when you're playing away in a very, very difficult environment, high pressure, to me, that is a huge luxury to have. And I think that his skill set is most effective from that finisher role perspective. Just want to touch back on the loose forwards. I truly believe that we will see a continuation from the Springboks of the 6-2 split. It's been a strategy that's worked so well for them. And they've been able to employ, uh, I guess, utilize the overall um, break up of the eight man bench effectively to that end. But I think they're failing a little bit in one respect, or, or there's an opportunity in one respect, and that is the British and Irish Lions have world class loose forwards at their disposal, and I want to set them loose on the breakdown in the series. You know, we are going to target the breakdown throughout the game. And we need guys that are both mobile, that are fantastic over the ball, that are physical. And these guys give me what I think is the best options there um, as a collective six. Billy Vanapola was someone who was dropping out of favor a little bit for me. His form has slumped in the World Cup. 
Um, and I just think overall, we're not really seeing the best of Billy V right now. Um, but you're putting a guy like Stander there at six who can cover eight or six. And I just think you've got two ball running options, physical ball running options. And I'm hoping that takes some of the dependency off of Billy V and allows him to play a little bit freer. You know, he's, he's called upon continuously to be that go forward at number eight. So taking some of the load off him, I think, can really help his game. And not only that, it gives you two options either side of the ruck to attack from, um, to attack from and attack from short. So we like that additional option. I touched on this earlier, but Courtney Laws, his primary role is going to be to come in as six cover. But if he needs to, he can um, he can fill in at the locks. Um, but I want to give Maro Otoji and James Ryan the brief. You're two young guys. You're going to have to hold up your end because we've got a very, very specific strategy to target the breakdown. And that's the brief, right? So, yes, you need to compete. And, yes, you need, you are going to compete at the lineup. But also, we want to target the um, the breakdown. So your primary role is to play 80 minutes of three tests. Now, that's a big call. But these are three young – sorry, two young athletic guys. And if anyone can do it, I do believe that they can. Um, other points, I do think that we are like at the halfback, obviously, Thomas Williams or Gareth Davids, you can interchange them. Um, there's other guys like Reese Webb who have come into the picture. Connor Murray probably had the best of the um, of the Six Nation this year, I thought, um, albeit uh, he wasn't outstanding, but I did think he was the best of the halfbacks. Ben Young's can be hit and miss, so halfback's becoming a little bit of a concern that we've got guys that can fill that role and probably um, hold their own, but we don't have world-class depth there at halfback yet. Now, could John Cooney have come in? Yes, he could have. Um, I just don't think we've seen enough there yet from him, but he's certainly one to watch. So, guys, that's that's the Hucker Time Rugby British and Irish Lions selection for 2020. As I mentioned, it's a continuation of that Lions series that we are doing. We're going to be previewing all we can in the lead up to that 2021 tour. I'm excited for that, and I hope you guys are too. But I'm going to leave it there for now, guys, and I want to hear from you. Which selections do you like? Which selections do you not like? Who would you have selected in other key positions? And tell me what you think of my overall strategy, guys. And I'll just do a quick recap on that. We are looking for high rotation in the front row, and that means guys coming in at the 45th to 55th minute. I like the injection of pace brought on by Kyle Sinclair as a finisher. Do you think that he is a finisher or not? Let me know. Um, and then we have gone for lock cover, so that's a low rotation position. But we've gone high rotation in um, the loose forwards and the thinking there is that we want to run them off their feet at the breakdown. That's a primary strategy that we're going to employ. Um, and then in the backs, we've got enough coverage there with guys like Owen Farrell who can sit into, um, who can slip into 12 if needed. Manu Tuilangi can slip into 13. Liam Williams can slip into 15. And then we've got Finn Russell who can obviously come in at replacement 10 if needed to really give us an injection of pace and a bit of X Factor there at the end. Oh, I've forgotten to mention one thing. Who is my captain? Big omission you will see here. Alan Wynne jones I have not selected in my team. I just don't believe in carrying a guy for the sake of it for his um, captaincy skills. The first objective of a captain should be world, to be world-class in their position. I do believe Alan Wynne jones is world-class but he's certainly not better than the two guys that I've selected in my opinion. And I just, I just, I wonder if he can, if he's up to the rigors of a tour of South Africa, like we are expecting. I think we need a little bit of, um, of youth in there. That's why I've gone with the Toji and Ryan, but overall my captain guys is going to be Owen Farrell. He's really, really impressed me guys. He's come a long way with his leadership skills and capability. And I just think he's got the right attributes that we want at this point in time. He can get under your skin a little bit, that's part of the reason why I like him, but he's very, very mentally tough, and we're going to need that in South Africa. I just think he is a guy that players will follow. He's building in his leadership capabilities. He's brash enough to rub um, the opposition the wrong way, but he's focused and dedicated. If you actually hear him speak to teammates um, when he's briefing them in team meetings, he's very, very clear. He's very, very crisp, and he knows what he wants to do. Um, I think he's coming on as a, as a leader, and I think this could be a huge step up for him in particular um, to go on and try and win a Lions series in South Africa. That's it from me, guys. I want to hear from you. Comment down below, and I'll be back with another one very, very soon.